Right, so now we're going to talk about exponential functions. All right, so here's the definition. Let a be a real number greater than 0 but not equal to 1. Then f of x equals a to the x power is the exponential function with base a, a being obviously the base and x being the exponent. So this is just our general um, exponential function. So let's graph f of x equals 3 to the x. All right, so remember when we don't know what something looks like graphically, we'll just do a little t-chart real quick. x and f of x. All right, so say when x is 0. Uh, f of 0 is, so 3 to the 0 is 1. That's right, it's not 0, it's 1. 3 to the 0 is 1. Then when x is 1, y is 3. When x is 2, y is 9. When x is 3, 3 to the third power, what's that? It's 27. Notice your y values are starting to get really large really fast. Like We're not going to want to go plot 327 over here, right? Much less when x is 4, y is 81. We don't want to plot that. So what about, say, negative 1? When x is negative 1. So 3 to the negative 1 would be, everybody remember? 1 third, right? And when x is negative 2, you'd have 3 to the negative 2, and that would be 1 ninth. So now, as x goes out to, uh, to negative infinity, goes out in the left direction here, your y values are going to get smaller and smaller. They're going to get closer and closer to 0. And so when we plot our points here, we have 0, 1, is that one. 1, 3. Just that one. 2, 9. Which is up here, way up here. Okay, and negative 1, and a third, so forth and so on. So it's going to be really close to the x-axis down here, and then it's going to get really the y value is going to get really large, really fast. Okay, that's why we. That's why when you hear the phrase something's growing exponentially, it means that it's happening really fast. All right? As x doesn't take long for your for your y values to be really big. All right. So there's a basic graph of an exponential function. A few things to make note of: the domain, all real numbers. Everybody see that? Every x value is being used, no problem. The range. Well, the range would be all real numbers, what? Greater than 0. So we would have 0 to infinity. Right? All y values greater than 0. This function is also always increasing on its domain. As you go, as you go from left to right, your graph is always going up from left to right. And one other thing we want to mention. Now, as x gets really large going out here into the negative direction, towards negative infinity, your y values get smaller and smaller and smaller, closer and closer to zero. That line, x, the x-axis there, y equals zero, is called a horizontal asymptote. And so in this case, the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. And what that means is as x gets really, really large, whether it's in the positive direction or the negative direction, your y values get closer and closer to some value. Okay? And in this case, they get closer and closer to 0. So the line y equals 0 is called an asymptote. All right, let's try this one. All right, so the same idea. Uh, we need to do a little t-chart. x, g of x. All right, if x is 0, g of x is 1. When x is 1, your y value is 1 third. When x is 2, so you have 1 third squared, that'd be 1 ninth. Now as x gets really large, your y values get really small. Okay, getting closer to 0. When x is negative 1, you'd have 1 third to the negative 1, which would be 3. Everybody agree? Remember that? And when it's negative 2, you'd have 1 third to the negative 2. So do the little reciprocal thing, and you'd have 9. So 0, 1, negative 1, 2, 3, 3, 1, and 1 third. 2 and negative 9 is up here somewhere. So now our graph's going to look like this. Everybody see that? It's actually kind of a reflection over the y-axis, right? Uh, if you want to tie that into uh, to that previous knowledge we, we discussed. 
So now the domain is still all real numbers. The range is all numbers greater than zero again. This time the function is decreasing, uh, and the um, horizontal asymptote is still y equals zero. All right? Okay. But your base here, one third, well obviously it's it's less than one, whereas over here it was greater than one. So notice kind of what happens with your functions depending on your base size. And everybody agree back here at our definition, we can't let a be one because one to the x power, well, is just one. And so no matter what you plugged in for x, your y value would always be one. So you have a horizontal line. And that's not an exponential function, so we, that's why we throw that one out. All right, so now let's go to a note. All right, so let a be a real number greater than zero, not equal to one again. Then a to the x is equal a to the y if and only if x and y are the same. So what this really thing is saying is if you have an equation and you have um, the base on each side is the same number, then the exponents have to be equal. Alright, so that makes sense? Alright, let's solve 2 to the x equals 8. Remember our goal is to figure out what x needs to be in order to make this a true statement. Well, we can use that little note we had a second ago if we can rewrite both sides here to have the same base. Well, 2 to the x is just 2 to the x, but 8 can be thought of as 2 cubed. And now the bases are exactly the same, so the only way this equation here can be true is if this exponent on the left, x, is equal to this exponent on the right, 3. We did not divide by 2. That is not what happened. All right? It's that the bases are the same, so the only way the left side here can be equal to this to the right side is if the exponent on the left, x, is equal to the exponent 3 on the right. Alright, so that's the solution. Alright, now let's expand on that. Let's call that number one. And let's look at number two and number three here. So we're going to solve these inequalities. Now you could do the little test point idea that we talked about in previous videos, or you can solve it graphically. Right? So if you solve it graphically, you know, you do your little you'll bring out your calculator. Okay, I'm just going to sketch it up since I don't have my calculator handy. So what I recommend is to do the x-intercept method. And so move everything to one side and graph y equals 2 to the x minus 8. Okay, graph this. All right, and when you do that in your calculator, it's going to look something like such. All right, where this is the number 3. Right, and when you move everything over here to the to the left side and call that y, you're really trying to solve y in this case is greater than zero. Remember, if you move the eight over, then you have a zero over there. Okay, and so to read this graph to solve for y equals zero, we're looking for all the x values where your y values are positive, greater than zero. In other words, where's your graph above the x-axis? Well, that would be from three to infinity. Everybody see that? From the x value 3 onward here to the right, your, your function is above the x-axis, which means your y values are positive. Okay? We use a parenthesis at 3 because 3 is not included. Okay, so the same idea over here. Same graph, but now we're saying, all right, where's 2x less than 8? Well, if you move everything over to one side and call that y, then we're really trying to solve y is, in this case, less than 0, because you move the 8 over and you call that y, so y is less than 0. So looking at your graph here, we're saying what x values give us y values that are less than 0? Or where's your graph below the x-axis? Well, everybody see it's from negative infinity until we get to 3. 3 is not included. This interval, negative infinity until we get to 3, your graph's below the x-axis. Right? So, while you could do the test point idea, that's fine. With inequalities, it might be easier just to whip out the graphing calculator and just graph the function and read the information off the graph. But with equations, it's probably a good idea to understand the, the um, concept that's happening here of the bases being equal, so then the exponents can be equal. All right, that's it. Make sure you see the next video on compound interest. Study well, and please let me know if you have any questions.